What is the seal of the Holy Spirit? What is the seal of the Holy Spirit? Get with me 2 Corinthians 1, and we'll start in verse 22. Well, let's start in verse 21. 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us, is God, who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. So God the Father seals the believer, and it references here, given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Get Ephesians 1 verse 13. The word earnest is used in the Scriptures in the sense that the term earnest money is used, or in modern parlance, a, a down payment. It, it, it's something given at the outset as a guarantee of future performance. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, "...in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise." What Ephesians 1.13 explains is this, when someone hears the word of truth, the gospel of their salvation, and they trust it, what happens is that after they believe, really contemporaneous with it, they are sealed by the Holy Spirit. One of the things that should give you confidence in your salvation is your salvation is not maintained by your good works, it's not maintained by your faithfulness by you're always doing the right thing, because salvation is by grace through faith. Salvation occurs in an instant, and, and once it is obtained, you possess it forever. The Holy Spirit is given as an earnest, as a guarantee of what God will subsequently accomplish in your life. Look with me at Ephesians 4 verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God indwells all believers today. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. In the Scripture, what is the day of redemption? It is the rapture. Romans 8.23 says that we are waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. We get new bodies at the rapture. Until the rapture, you're going to have to live with the body you have. But <coughs> the day of redemption occurs at the rapture. So what have we seen here? Ephesians 1, 13, when you believe the gospel, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. How long are you sealed for? Well, you're sealed unto the day of redemption. The day of redemption is what? It's the rapture. So in terms of what is the sealing, S-E-A-L-I-N-G, the sealing of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, is given to the believer, it indwells the believer, and it preserves the believer unto the day of redemption. Now the question that I posed at the beginning is, what is the seal, S-E-A-L, of the Holy Spirit? It's a slightly different question, and to get at that question, I, I want to show you one of the definitions of the word seal. So we're looking here at the Oxford English Dictionary, and we're looking at the word seal, and you can see noun two. So this is the second noun entry for seal. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the first definition of the word. So look at this with me. A seal is a device, e.g., a heraldic or emblematic design, a letter, word, or sentence impressed on a piece of wax or other plastic material, adhering or attached by cords or parchment slips to a document as evidence of authenticity or attestation. Also the piece of wax, etc., bearing this impressed device. The, the idea is, and the example probably many are familiar with, if you've ever seen a document notarized, frequently what the, the notary will do is will sign it and then they will take an embosser and they will squeeze the, the paper and crimp it. And what it does is it imparts a, a seal to the document. Now I want you to notice just something about this device. It's a heraldic or emblematic design, a letter, word, 
or sentence. So in other words, it bears some content, some message, whether it's a letter, a word, or a sentence, okay? So there, there's some content to it. Now with that, that raises the question, the seal of the Holy Spirit, what is that particular content? So get with me 2 Timothy 2 verse 9. And this is something I came across where it's, it's just amazing when you just read things and try to pay close attention to what it's telling you. It's amazing what the Word of God says. 2 Timothy, <coughs> 2 Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, now notice this, having this seal. So here's the seal. And then you see there's a comma and there's a capital the. It, it's telling you that here is the content of the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And, you see the capital L there, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Well, I think 2 Timothy 2, 19 gives you the content, the message of what the seal of the Holy Spirit is. So notice the two parts of it. The Lord knoweth them that are His. <clears throat> Isn't that fascinating as to the content? So what happens when someone believes the gospel? Well, when they believe the gospel, they're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and, and that sealing preserves them unto the day of redemption. Well, the content of the seal says what? The Lord knoweth them that are His. It, it, it's a mark of identification, isn't it? The Lord knows them that are His. <clears throat> then notice the second part of it. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Get with me Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. One of the things that people will sometimes say in opposition to grace is they will say, well, grace means you can live any old way you want. Grace means you can live like the devil. Grace means you can commit all these sins and still be saved. Well, grace does mean that you can commit all kinds of sins and be saved because grace indicates that you are saved not by works, but by as a free gift based upon the shed blood of Christ. Now, it doesn't mean that you should do bad works or that God approves of it, but the fact of the matter is your salvation that you have by grace is not dependent upon your works or your continued good behavior. Now, notice with me Titus 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Now, notice verse 11. 12, teaching us. So what does grace do? It teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So does grace actually mean, as people say, well, grace means you can live like the devil. Grace means that it doesn't matter what you do, it's all okay. According to the Scriptures, what grace actually does is it teaches us that we should do what? We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. Well, that's completely consistent with the second part of the seal in 2 Timothy 2.19, let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So the answer to the question, what is the seal of the Holy Spirit? The content of the seal of the Holy Spirit is found in 2 Timothy 2.19. And what that seal says is, The Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity.